Hello. How are you, Steve? I am good. Good things. Um, this is our finale for the Creep Show Season 1 reviews. We went through each episode, one through the final, episode six. You excited, Steve? Uh, yes. Cast the series off. So, um, this one was originally aired. I was looking on this is interesting on Halloween night last year. This was the finale on Shudder. Uh, AMC has been showing this stuff just because they don't have anything to show. You know, they're getting, I don't know what they're going to do after this week. You think they'll do, uh, cursed films. They have the, that show on that's another one that people kind of talking about a little bit. There's a couple series on shutter. They, they might be able to show there's yeah. something called dead wax or something. And I never, and, but I think those are really short episodes, but they got, they got some other shows they could put, plop on AMC. Mm-hmm. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, which I, I guess they would have aired that on Monday, whatever that was. I didn't. I didn't think to look. But uh, this episode, which is the uh, season finale, is uh, the two stories in it are skin crawlers, not to be uh, confused with skin walkers. Which was a classic shit movie from about fifteen years ago, and um, by the silver water of Lake Champlain. Mm-hmm. See, I can't say Lake Champlain without thinking about Robert Stack. That's my problem. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Ah. Uh. So anyway, um, I kind I kind of enjoyed both of these. Um, I the the first episode we'll talk about skin skin crawlers. I keep wanting to say skin walkers, but no, it's, it's not the shitty. Uh, wasn't skin walkers a vampire movie or something like that? They were like cat people. Okay. They they. So, I don't know what the hell they. Were. I don't forgot. I forgot. I didn't like it. Yeah, there's a lot of those movies that kind of run together for me. I couldn't. I remember it, but I kind of. Kind of don't, you know, but I don't want to ever watch it again. I know that. Um, but skin crawlers, there's uh, a lot of overweight lard asses in this episode, Steve. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of fat suits. Yeah, there's there's like one guy that's really kind of fat, and then the other guy, the other people uh, are. Um, like they look like uh, Weird Al Yankovic and uh, yeah. the Fat video back in the, <laughs> back in the eighties. So anyway, um, this is kind of a play off of like all those infomercials. People got like all kinds of um, you know products to hawk and everything else. Well, the guy that stars in this isn't really um, there's not really a gimmick to it, but basically he's got these oversized leeches that. They suck the fat out of you, baby. Make you instantly, you know, well, I don't know. Yeah, pretty much instantly skinny. Yeah. Or less fat. Yeah. Um, so later on in the episode, there is a, a, a solar eclipse that um, kind of turns things sour, if you will. And uh, all the people that have, that have had the, the leech fat-sucking procedure are obliterated by madness. we we'll just say that without giving too much away. Speaking of being obliterated, Steve, are you excited about the new 4K remaster of Big Abner? Yes, you got to see you got to see the Big Abner in 4K. Yeah, I gave you a copy of that, didn't I? I've got it somewhere here. <laughs> I'm I'm going to uh, because I was talking about that with uh, Adam Beck recently, 
I was, I was like, that would, you know, the 4K of Big Ag would be good to showcase your big, uh, you know, home theater system with your projector and stuff. Yeah, show the kids and the next door neighbors, Big Abner. Yeah, they appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Big Abner aside, you know, like great Sonny <laughs> Landham, what did you think of uh, Skin Crawlers, which... Uh, this episode um, was directed by Roxanne Benjamin, who also did Lydia Lane's Better Half. Hmm. That group show. Well, so, definitely, she got, she had, I guess maybe she had a little bit better story to work with. This one definitely fits the mode of like a Tales from the Dark Side or Tales from the Crips. <laughs> Crips. The Crypt ep- uh the special effects were decent. Tales from the Crips, the gang. Yeah, the, the gang. But uh, can't joke about shit like that right no, now. No, okay. mm-hmm. well, I wore blue. I think in blue is for the Crips, and the red is for the blood. Yeah, I got I got blue on too. Yeah, but Dana Gould, who's the uh, main main <laughs> guy in there, who likes donuts, uh, so he's a he was a, a big, uh, a bigger comedian back in like the '80s and '90s, but he does a good job being your average guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he loves burritos in the episode too. <laughs> big fan of the bean and cheese burritos. <laughs> Which who's not? I love them. Yeah, but that's so, uh, yeah. the, the stuff at the uh, stuff at the. Um, they were doing like a live news segment and he was going to get his fat sucked out by a leech. And then everything went to hell before that. That was kind of interesting yeah, and funny. This was the, the, you know, the exact same time as the solar eclipse going down, you know, and then, you know, just heads explode and shit squirts everywhere. And it's just, you know. There's some, uh, Gooey, dog, and there's that dog didn't like it, the episode they were doing. <laughs> yeah, now you don't like it. And then there's a bunch of uh, there's like a giant creature that shows up for a little bit. Yeah, so it was a good, good makeup, like prosthetic effects and just gore and stuff like that. So I'm always down for that sort of um, that sort of thing, and, uh, you know, I enjoyed the episode, and I thought it was, like, kind of goofy, but, you know, good, good kind of goofy. So, um, the next one up here would be the, by the, by the silver water of Lake Champlain. <laughs> Call 1-800- Eight seven six five three five three. Wow, you remembered it. Who doesn't remember that? If you watched that show for any period of time at all back in the day, you remember that damn phone number. I'm watching it right. I'm watching it right now. There you go. You're getting hopped up for uh, the Netflix Unsolved Mysteries. That's one of our go-to channels on uh, Pluto TV. Is the uh, Unsolved Mysteries twenty-four-seven channel. I love on Unsolved Mysteries. And, you know, they did a, um episode, of course. There's a box set that came out years ago. And the, I don't, they're probably not worth as much anymore just because they're on TV. They're on the Amazon and Pluto mm-hmm. TV and all this shit. But they had one on, um, I think it was Strange Legends or Bizarre Creatures or something like that. I got that. It, it had, yeah, I did too. I think I've got all of them, actually. <laughs> I don't know. I got four or five of them, but uh, the um, the one on Champ, the Lake Champlain monster, I remember as a kid, and uh, this is kind of a uh, uh, Loch Ness monster uh, type creature from back in the day, um, and Tom Savini was the one that actually did this episode, which yeah. is kind of interesting. He he was the one that directed it, so. Um, and I didn't know, like, for the longest time, Savini said he would never direct anything else after, you know, the bad experience on Not Living Dead. Uh, but, um, yeah, this one, I mean, is um, the is a 
family and the father had always told them stories about the champ monster and had always had a fascination with with hunting the creature down and all that and um you know so the family goes in search of with leonard nimoy and uh you know and it's a good like i like this one just because it had a good like atmosphere to it it actually parts of it the creature itself looks kind of bad. Like they didn't show the creature too much. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the details. If they just had the creature in the shadow or something like that, but it would work. But the details on it, it looked kind of kind of hokey. But it was a fun. I enjoyed that episode too. Uh, I think it must be the first movie they ever did on on the Champ uh, uh, Monster. So I was intrigued by that. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, that the stuff with the uh, stepfather is kind of cliche, but other other than that, it was okay. Yeah, I think in every story though, like there should be at least one bad guy that needs to get his. <laughs> yeah, and they just had to throw that in there too. So and he the, he came. He was like he could have been uh, the father from Rob Zombie's Halloween, pretty much. Yeah. He just had to clean yeah, your mouth. <laughs> yeah, he kind of overdid it, and uh, eh, it is what it is. But the episode itself was good. Like I said, the only thing, like, I would have kept the champ monster, like, the details of it kind of, because they that, that did look kind of hokey to me. I don't know if Savannah did that or who did the I didn't think it looked that, that bad at all, to be honest, but my, my opinion, it looked like the the – the dinosaur creature they were because uh, I've seen that that image before, so they kind it, it kind of fit that. But I mean, I, I didn't mind it at all. But you're the creepy creepy connoisseur. Yeah, I'm I'm creepy as fuck. Yeah, creep. But uh, but uh, yeah. I mean, that is Creep Show season one. Overall, I enjoyed it. There was only I think there was only maybe two or three episodes that I completely hated and the rest of it was pretty good. You know, watchable. Totally watchable. And that's a hard thing to do in this day and age, Steve. Well, I heard that uh, AMC has already green-lighted a, a season three of Creep Show, so it's kind of wild because they haven't done season two yet. So is there a deal with AMC as far as the future seasons already or what? I mean, I'd have to think so. I mean, obviously, Shutter is an AMC network, so anything they make on there is, fair, you know, would have maybe might have to be edited a little bit, but it's fair game for them to bring over. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they're going to try to save money in the future to make up for all any money they might have lost, or, or maybe just for programming needs, they will they'll broadcast them. Uh, probably yeah. sooner than later. Right. So, I, yeah, I mean, as far as, like, I don't know what the ratings did this this on uh, this season here on AMC, but um, it may get to the point where they're like, hey, let's show this on Shutter and AMC simultaneously or something like that. Um, just because AMC's got the Fear Fest going on every, like, around the fall anyway. So it would make sense to do that. Yeah, they'll probably rerun this during that i would imagine yeah but that is creep show the first season and now we don't have anything to review steve it's over done done until we find something else which oh. we'll, we'll uh we'll see we've got we've got a couple of different ideas but uh, if anybody has any suggestions on other review types of, of, of horror shows, movies, anything like that, we're open. We're open like a whole whole twat, baby. So, until next time, uh, you got anything to promote, Steve? You got the new Two Against podcast. It's going to be up on the Dead Pit Network shortly. Yeah, it'll be a good one. It's episode 100. I'm on Friday. Yeah, we that, celebrated that up tomorrow. And 
we're going to put we're going to try to put it on the uh, feed so you'll have it on stitcher uh wow. itunes yeah i figured i'd go ahead on the hundredth episode we'll do that Luckily, I didn't put any copyright music on it, so that's good. Well, it don't matter. Uh, I don't think well, so. I hope not, because the dead <laughs> pit, uh, it's up on Spotify, and uh, because I don't want uh, Albert Fish and the Influence of Hell to sue us. I hope not. Brian <laughs> Marshall, going to hire Stephen P. New. But, uh, <laughs> check, us, check us out, deadpit.com. We will be back. At some point, and do different. Yeah. Dead pit. Dot com. I thought. <laughs>